Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Eddie's Speed Garage. I'm Ed, and today we're working on my 2020 Honda Ridgeline Black Edition. What we're going to do is we're going to do an inch and a half leveling kit, and this is the prime components of the kit here. So you have the ring that goes on top of the strut, and then you have what they sent was a Moog sway bar link. We're going to go through the steps and teach you how to do it yourself today, so stay tuned. All right, guys, so first things first is you got to get the truck off the ground, and we talked about it. You got to have the tire up at least far enough to where when you go to put the tire back on afterwards, you'll have enough clearance. And what we did here was we placed the jack right there on that mounting point, and then we also used the jack stand on the pinch well. We're going to leave the jack in place to see if it works for us. All right, folks, Chris is going to talk us through what we're going to do. So first thing we're going to do is take off our uh, brake caliper. we got two bolts back there holding this piece on the bracket. We'll take our brake line off of the little bracket on the strut. Take our ABS sensor wire off. The Christmas tree in the back there. We'll take our, our tie rod end nut off. We'll take our ball joint loose at the bottom and our steering nut on the axle and then we'll take our strut bolts out up at the top and the whole piece should come out and we can bolt our uh, extension pad on there. All right, so now we're gonna take the brake line nut loose, bolt. An important thing to remember here is that you don't let your caliper hang on the brake line. That's bad news. And there you go. So next we're gonna just give this a little pull. And that comes off. It's free. All right, so now that we've got the vehicle speed sensor disconnected from the car, we decided to go that route instead. All we had to do was remove a few clips, had to pry these in from this side, as you can see right through there, that you can access them with a pick. From what, just like that. This one, we had to pry out. And then that one, we had to squeeze the two clips in. The whole thing came out, and then we were able to unplug it from that in the back there all right next we're going to remove the sway bar link it's a 17 millimeter hopefully this will do it bingo so now unfortunately we're going to have to do the bottom link probably with the ratchet but we'll see if we can sneak something in there with a swivel now we're removing the cotter pin for the tie rod end should always have a replacement for these. You shouldn't really reuse them, but I've seen it done before. 17 millimeter nut. And usually, or if your hammer doesn't work, you can buy one of these tools. The trick here is you don't want to destroy your boot on your tie rod. Easy peasy. So now we're working on the lower ball joint. There's just a fancy cotter pin in there. Just gotta pop it out with a, either like a screwdriver or pull it out with some dikes and you should be good to go. All right, so this is the tool we're gonna use to separate the lower ball joint. It's from Harbor Freight, it costs about 20 bucks and it should save the boot for us. All right, so that's what the tool looks like installed. 
So now we're gonna apply a little pressure and hopefully it'll pop loose. All right, now we're gonna put a 35 millimeter socket on our impact. And I'm gonna tell you these impact guns make things a lot easier. And we're gonna disconnect the CV joint axle. Okay, being that it's a newer vehicle, that thing just slid right back out. So we shouldn't have any problems getting that apart. All right, so you gotta pop the hood and under the cover, you have these three covers. You guys gotta pop those, our two covers that one out Put those loose and then you'll be able to see there's the nuts there's the other two we're gonna take those out and we should be ready for complete disassembly and have it on the floor in a second all right so all three of the bolts or the nuts are out up here I put a pry bar in here so I can just pry the lower control arm out of the way a little bit so what we're gonna do is just get that down lift it up a little bit and then pull it out so down. So all you gotta do for this, is I would say maybe dust that off a little bit and then you'll slide that on. All right, so when this comes off the vehicle, this is oriented just like that. As you can see here, there's a line here and a line here. What you wanna do is you want to take this, you want to match up the threads. You see how that doesn't match? That doesn't match. So the last way we can be is like this. So now this is the new front stud that we want to keep lined up. So what we'll do is we'll turn this over. Now this has got to be where this is. So we're going to Make a mark with our finger here, and we will just spin it into place. And that, my friend, is going to save you a lot of headache when you're reinstalling. All right, so before we tighten these nuts down, we're going to put some permanent Loctite on them. That way there's no worrying about anything. And even though it sounds like it's permanent, it's not. You can still get them loose. It's just very difficult, and it shouldn't ever do it on its own. All right, so what we're doing now is we're lifting the strut assembly back into position. Uh, this is definitely a two-man job for this part. We're gonna get the holes lined up up top. We're gonna put a nut in to hold it in place or two. So now we're going to put the axle back in. Right there where Chris's finger is, that's the top of the lower control arm bolt. We did loosen it up. We found out on the other side that uh, it allows you more space to drop the control arm in order to get the assembly back in. All right, I just want to let you guys know that the rest of the installation is just the reverse of uh, this assembly. You, know, you get to the top of the strut in there, you get some bolts started, you have to loosen the front bolt and the lower control arm and put a pry bar in there so you can pry it down and slide the ball joint in and then you just attach your other things that you took apart and you're all done. 
I also wanted to just say that don't start this job unless you have a few tools. One of them here is a tie rod separator if you wanna not change or destroy your tie rod end boots. You also want this ball joint separator here. Same thing, you don't wanna destroy your boot, so this is the best way to do it. I got this from Harbor Freight. I did have to make this a little bit wider so that it would slide around the, the lower ball joint, but it worked fantastic, as you probably saw in the video. Next, I suggest that you have a torque wrench. If yours doesn't go down into the 20s or up into the 100s, you might need two of them, but you'll need a good torque wrench, especially for that hub nut. A couple of suggestions that I'll have is an impact gun. This made things a lot easier, especially on the hub nut and just taking bolts out. It's just quicker and easier taking your lug nuts off. And then something that you could want to have is a smaller one. This is a 3 8 quarter. It could be any size you want because you can just change your chuck out. But this also, because it's smaller, can get into tighter places. PSS, you have to go and get it aligned. It's, it's very important. And another thing that I would suggest is that you disconnect the negative battery cable or the positive battery cable, whichever floats your boat, just to reset all your electronics in the car as far as your radar, your crash avoidance, all that stuff. You're raising it up three inches or an inch and a half in the front and it could confuse it so if you reset it you reboot it and that changes thing and you also might notice that people are going to start flashing their headlights at you that's because your headlights have now come up too if you guys want a video on how to adjust the headlights on these things just drop a comment down below and i'll get to it like and subscribe we'll catch you next time